Well, hello and welcome back to the House of Valentina. I'm so excited because today we're going to be talking about 2024 trends. I am so excited about this. I am Clearly, so excited. I am as well because I'm singing, but <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it because I absolutely I am so excited about the trends that we're going to talk about today. I think they're going to be kind of shocking for a lot of you. I think a lot of you are going to be thrilled. I have not told him. That's why he's looking at me like no, no clue. He doesn't know what's coming. Nope. He doesn't know what I'm going to say. Nope. And I think that's kind of fun because I hope that we can have a really good conversation about these trends because I know a lot of people click on these videos and then they're mad that there's trends. And I'm like, I don't understand trends video <laughs> but I, <know. laughs> I think you're gonna really like these trends i think that you're gonna find that they're ones that you're gonna really want to not just jump onto for like a day or two but there's something that's gonna really resonate with deep within your soul <laughs> <laughs> Yay. i really do think you're gonna love them so make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already and let's jump into 2024 trends home trends i didn't say that no you did not home. Oh, that's okay. actually some of these like are like an aesthetic, so they're gonna be fun. Okay, let's <laughs> jump in. First one, let's start off with one that I think that you've all, you've definitely all been asking for and one that I think a lot of you are gonna be really relieved about and that, Jack, look at his face. I'm, I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> he doesn't know. Big trend for this year that you're going to really see and you are going to love is new farmhouse. That's my Whoa. term. That's my term. I'm calling it new farmhouse. I think it's, you know, we we did a video about modern farmhouse being dead, and oh, some of you really did not like that. <laughs> the pitchforks came out on that one. Oh, some of you really <laughs> did not like that, and you know what? I don't blame you. When you've spent a lot of money on your yeah. home, and uh, New York Times comes out with articles about how your home style is going to be, you know, no longer around. Of course, that makes people feel uncomfortable and extremely unhappy. Oh yeah. Here's my thing. Let's just get this out in the beginning. I think that trends are just a sign of what people are interested in, right? You can be interested in anything you want. Yeah. We'll get into that more into depth in this video. But I do think it's important to remember that the reason that a trend becomes popular is because a lot of people are interested in it. So with Farmhouse, people have been obsessed for more than a decade. This has been going on for a long time. It's been a time. long time. But if you look at our country historically, you will see that farmhouses have been around long before even the gains came onto the yeah, scene. Yeah, totally. And they will always be here. The thing is, is that even the farmhouse style itself has gone through an evolution. And the style even that the gains were doing when they first got started on Fixer Upper isn't the same as what they're doing now. No, they're actually not doing a whole lot of what they were originally doing anymore. Exactly, yeah. even they really aren't doing what a lot of people would quote unquote call modern farmhouse. I think they've gone to a lot more of a cottage feel. I think that's where a lot of people are wanting to move. You're gonna see how these kind of segue between these trends and how there's a lot of crossover. So if you don't find yourself specifically fitting into one, do not worry, because these have a lot of crossover and there's a lot of elements that are gonna work no matter what style house you have or what style you like. You can kind of use a lot of the elements from each of these. But I do think that we're in a new farmhouse period and that's why i think it needs a new name because it really has to be something different so what is the difference then if it's not modern farmhouse and it's kind of this new farmhouse so what would be the difference imagine a lot more stacked stone a lot more warmth mm. uh moving away from super stark white while she sits in a stark white room look this is what i tell you guys that's right like do what you love like if you still like that modern farmhouse style who cares whether it's in or out it's your house yeah it's your, it's your haven your castle your domain like you got to make it your own but what i think that you will start to see a lot more uh places like our house oh, maybe yeah. just like really showing you a more elegant side of farmhouse That's i think true. there's just an an elegance and a warmth instead of like that real sterile, lots of signs, right? We don't need to label everything. We kind of joke about that a lot. I mean, if you like those signs, we actually aren't gonna come over and judge you. Nope, <laughs> we will not. But, um, we really aren't like that, <laughs> actually. No. But if the point of what we do here is to share with you the tips and tricks that you'll want. So as you're putting your home yeah. together, and if you're wanting to know what a lot of people are gonna be doing in their homes, or if you're thinking about selling your home, these tools will be really useful to you. Uh, so I do think that you will see a lot less signage, a lot less of the kitschy side of 
modern farmhouse. And what you're gonna start to see is a really sophisticated, warm side. You'll see a warm paint palette, beiges, taupes, uh, really rich dark browns, really rich dark greens. I love the sound of this. I absolutely love, I love cozy and warm and, but I also love that elegant factor. And so I, I'm excited about this. I really am. I am too. I am so excited to take just a moment and thank our video sponsor for today, which is AG1. I absolutely love AG1 because it has really transformed my life and I know it has for so many of you as well. A couple years back, I noticed that my energy was just super low, which is so not normal for me because I usually am just like that energizer bunny kind of person. I just go and go. And I had just kind of hit a wall. And when I started researching nutrition and trying to see what did I need to get? And then you start looking at all the options and it just felt impossible. What I love about AG1 is that it brings you convenient and comprehensive nutrition for your daily needs. It helps with gut health. It helps with energy. It helps with your long-term health as well. Fit for life. That's what I always say, fit for life. AG1 is a key component for that, and it's so easy to keep up with. <laughs> That's really important for me as a busy uh, working mom uh, because I just can't keep up with all of it. So you can buy it. You can buy AG1 in the big packs like this and use the scoop. I love the fact that they offer these travel packs because I do find it very convenient to just pop this into my bag. If I've run out the door kind of early and I didn't get to uh, drink my AG1, then I, ha I always have one in my bag. They're also convenient for travel, but either way, all you need is about eight to 12 ounces of water. And then you just pour the packet in here and then you just shake it up. I think what's so great about it is that it's so easy to just add into your daily routine. So I always drink my AG1 in the morning after I work out, like right after I get up, because not only is it giving me all this great nutrition, it's also getting me to drink water first thing. So it's, I love the flavor of the AG1. I always say it tastes like candy. Cheers. <laughs> mm. It's really delicious. I think that it's something that everybody should include in their daily routine. So, so make sure to click my link. It gets new customers $20 off when they subscribe. And it comes with a free shaker bottle, five travel packs, and D3 plus K2 drops. Enjoying your home is also feeling good in your skin. And that's why I think this is so important for us to be chatting about. So thank you again to AG1 for being our video sponsor. I, we live in an area where farmhouses, we're down in Atlanta, so yeah. There are actual farms yeah. within minutes from here. Everywhere there are farms. And we've been dreaming of moving out to some beautiful farmland. And when I've looked at the modern farmhouse movement, I felt discouraged because I didn't feel like I could see us fitting into that. Yeah. But actually there's this whole other side of farmhouse, this new farmhouse that will be warmer, more elegant, a little bit more sophisticated. Rather than the jam jars, you'll see just some beautiful crockery. I think that's really beautiful. Ooh, that's um, exciting. Yeah, I it's know. It's really exciting. Really lovely handmade vessels, uh, really rich, decadent, like dark, rich brown velvets and linens. And so I think that you're going to see just this really, like almost a little bit more decadent side of farmhouse. So if you have a farmhouse and you're thinking about grabbing onto this new farmhouse style, and maybe you're maybe you've been in farmhouse for a while you might be ready for a paint job on your house you might want to think about warmer tones mm. and maybe adding in a little bit of stone and taking a little bit more to the cottage side but either way definitely going to be seeing farmhouse it is a core it, it is literally a core style. Like it cannot ever it will go, never go away. away. Yeah, no, never. no. So you're always going to see it. It's just going to be evolving. And I think the evolution that we're going to see in 2024 is super exciting. So we already have alluded to this style, but I think we need to dive in a little bit deeper because you guys are never going to let me use the word cottage without more discussion because we were talking in a more recent video about how we love modern cottage and you guys were like, give us more. <laughs> I know there were so many people saying, give us more. We want to know more. Yes. So in 2024, expect 
modern cottage. Yay! Yes, so it's gonna have a little bit of that, I, I wouldn't say it's cottage core, because a lot of that's really pinks and greens, and it's kind of girly. I mean, it, stereotypical, that was really a typical, stereotypical thing to say, but lots of florals and pinks. Yeah. That, you could do that in this style, but I think the modern side of it is gonna take you to the more sophisticated side of the cottage style. So that's exciting. Lots of nice stone. Do you see how these styles are kind of segueing? Yeah, they so are. you're gonna see lots of stacked stone. You're gonna see lots of the return. I, I, I think you're gonna see a mix of cabinetry actually across those two styles, especially where there'll be a little bit more ornate. People are starting to push back just a little bit on that slab front or the flat front cabinet, but they're also starting to push back on the shaker because everybody's got it. And the minute everybody's got it, people start looking for something new. So I think you'll see a little bit more embellishment on the cabinets, but I do think you will continue in these styles to still see a little bit more of a raw, you think people are going to uh, wood. I was yeah. going to say, do you think the paint is going to go away some? We're going to start seeing some more stained again. You're going to see a lot of stained, a lot of stained. I don't think that you'll see cherry in this style as much, but if it's what you like, it's okay. I would look more towards like mahogany colors, mm. ones that aren't quite so orange and quite so red, but they're really rich, dark brown because the palette from that new farmhouse is what you're going to see in Modern Cottage as well. I do think that you will continue to see black and white and neutrals in the Modern Cottage because it hasn't really had its turn. Yeah. And so a lot of people that really loved Modern Farmhouse will segue over to Modern Cottage and stick with that black and white palette. But I think you're gonna see quite a bit of a mix within this. So expect, just like with, with New Farmhouse, you'll see a lot of velvets and linens, you'll see cashmere, you'll mm. see some plaids starting to come in, some tartans into the style. Oh my gosh, this style. is so, so much fun. I know, I love it. And I'm so excited to get even deeper into this style. So let us know, again, if this is of interest to you and we can break this one down even more in an, in an upcoming video. We can spend the whole time chatting about <laughs> It. So write in the in the comments any of the questions that you have so we can uh, round up all the questions and then yeah, answer them fun. in those videos. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about one that just kind of cracked me up and I got to just chat about this with you guys and that is Plaza Core. Are you serious? <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? I have no idea. Plaza Core? <laughs> yes. Like the Plaza Hotel. Yes, yes, exactly. Really? I didn't know what it meant when I first looked at it. I was like, what, a plaza? I saw it, I think it was in Glamour Magazine maybe? I'll leave a link to the article where they were talking about it and I was like, what is that? And then I looked it up and I'm like, oh, this is like an entire aesthetic. Oh and I gosh. think that's what a lot of these styles really are becoming is that you're seeing like, an all-encompassing aesthetic where it's what do you eat, what do you wear, what do you, uh, what kind of bed do you have, what kind of sofa do you have, like what does the whole room look like, and what kind of car do you drive, like that's what we're really seeing as an overall trend is that we're really moving more towards these all-encompassing aesthetics where we don't, we no longer just that's want so to cool. compartmentalize our lives, but that we want a lifestyle that goes with it. So. Yeah, so you want like the room and the smell and the like the fabrics and all that to go together. Yes, exactly. Uh, I'm, exactly. I'm all in. Yes, so with Plaza Core, we were just kind of laughing because we booked a trip up to New York and the Plaza was actually one of the only places that had, we booked it last minute. So Very last minute. <laughs> it was one of the only places that had rooms left <laughs> yeah. that were $10,000 a night. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, we'll go to the Ritz. But when I saw this, I thought, we used to call, like we would use the term Ritzy. Somebody who is a Ritzy person. Oh yeah. Well, I'm like, well, that makes sense that you would say that it's Plaza Core. But if you look it up, it is actually a lot of girls going to the plaza. Yeah, a lot of them are staying there and filming. Yeah, well, we had a lot of fun while we were there, actually. We didn't realize that we were like a part of the new aesthetic. That is so cool. We just fell into that by accident. We just thought it would be nice and centrally located. Yeah, it was more about location for us. Yeah. That's so cool. But we actually really enjoyed this aesthetic. So Plaza Court is actually like it's actually not a whole lot of modernness. I, I actually, the champagne bar was quite modern. The, yeah, but what I thought about it was, it was just, I don't know, it was it was luxury, but it wasn't like pretentious. It was just- Everybody there was so nice. So nice. We had like the, like the people that were staying there, and of course the staff is just really kind and friendly. 
we just had like the like we felt like we were on like a resort like you walk in and you feel like you're transported to somewhere else and they had fun we wow. really liked it so yeah. we've always said oh well we're not so much into cherry furniture you walk in there and oh my goodness the decadent furniture and the antiques that was so well done but it was also done in a little bit more pared back way so i I do think there is a modernness there. There is, and there's more of a, like an approachability. It wasn't, it, it was formal, but it didn't feel super formal. No, and the chairs were really comfortable. It had that gorgeous uh, oh, like yeah. velvet on them, and it was very traditional, but it was done in a way that still felt really approachable. And yeah, we just enjoyed it, and we were like, okay, this is not, we almost didn't stay there because of the way that we thought the room would look. And in fact, we actually loved it. So I think with Plaza Core, what you'll expect is that you're going to see a lot more ornate details being brought in through the furnishings, mm. through the bed and nightstands and dressers, tables and chairs. You'll see a lot more traditional furniture, antiques even with really beautiful, intricate details but it will be paired back in a way because the walls themselves will be a little bit more neutral. Oh, and I okay. think that's where this is different from just traditional style. It, it's not layers and layers and layers and layers of wallpapers and pillows and it's that's everything true. in the room is super ornate. I think that's what this style is really all about. A, a key part of this style I think is the little velvet bows too. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Well, and because I already bought mine. I was going to take mine. It's so funny. I was going to take mine to the plaza. <laughs> but hey, we had borrowed it and I forgot to take it with me. Oh my gosh, you should have. But your headband <laughs> like, oh looked gosh. great. You were wearing a headband. That I goes was. With it. But the plaza, I think, is all about that upscale feel, but there's a slight feeling of romanticism. Yeah. It was actually really romantic. There. It was very romantic. Yeah. This is a big swing, though, because for is. years we've been taking all these things out of homes. I know. So a lot of people who have held on to their antiques will be thrilled. If you've um, kept your trim work, if you've kept your more ornate fireplace, those things, yes, they're gonna come back. They're gonna come back and it's gonna be a little bit more decadent. It's gonna be a little bit more sophisticated, but with some of it will be pared back and it won't be so many layers of details. So leading up from that one is actually one that our daughter was like, oh, that's so coquette. And we were like, eh. <laughs> What does that mean? People don't know what's in style on TikTok, okay? <laughs> yeah. They have to tell us. <laughs> I mean, I tend to avoid any kind of trend that's like here today and gone tomorrow. I'm like, eh, not really my thing. I'm not really going to do that. Right. I'm looking for something that's lasting. I think maybe once you hit, like especially 30s, 40s and older, you're like, I'm never going to actually complete a house if I don't stop following trends. And so I think a lot of times we tend to stop following micro trends. But the coquette core <laughs> is actually, I think it's actually a sign of the time, which is really interesting. It's a little bit like plaza core, but it's a lot more romantic and a lot more floral. Okay, I was about to ask you, I have no idea what coquette more core means. Yes, so what it means is that it's just like a really romantic style but it's like an upscale version of it. Okay. So imagine pink roses, pink tulips, okay. floral, floral wallpaper, um, some like a little bit more frilly dresses, but then there's like, it's balanced. It's not like cottage core where it was like, yeah, like everything in the room is on theme. It's oh, not quite cool. like that. It's a little bit like the plaza core where it's like, it's a little bit more modern too. The palette for this one is definitely pinks and like light blues and maybe That's some fun, periwinkles though. in there. Yeah. And definitely, again, again, the ornate detail is coming back. People are moving away and not everybody, so don't panic if you've got a Scandinavian style because we're always going to love Scandinavia. Yeah, always. always. But I think that you're going to see that a lot more people are trending away from those environments that can feel a little bit sterile at times and that aesthetic where everything is white. That aesthetic is, seems to be going out and people are just ready for a little bit more detail. It's going to be fun. I think it's so. It's a lot of really fun things. I think so. I think it should be a lot of fun. I it's know. It's going to be a lot of fun to explore that one. Yeah. I know. I'd love to see your version of that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I can picture myself <laughs> doing that one as much. A little hair bow maybe, but... 
It's so feminine that it I is. tend to. I mean, I've got puppy sleeves, so what am I saying? And I know ruffle, you're like. Yeah, I mean, this is like my way of doing it because this is like yeah, because I do. But, but still yeah, have but that. there is a way of interpreting it more of in a neutral palette, and that's what you do. I think so. I think so. I think we should have some fun with it. Let me know if you guys are interested in hearing more about that style as well. The final style that I am really excited about, and that is classic style. Like classic preppy style. Yes. Is making a huge comeback. I mean like, it's everywhere. Preppy is everywhere. Ralph Lauren must just be giggling and having the sweetest dreams because that sort yes. of classic style that never goes out is so in. So in fashion, places like J. Crew, Brooks Brothers, oh, Ralph Lauren, yes. like that's where we have always loved to shop. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and we've loved that preppy style, but for a while we kind of felt like we're kind of uncool. And we're really not cool, but <laughs> we know that. That's fine. <laughs> fine. We don't care about being cool. Yeah. But I just think that there's this return to, and I think a lot of it's the pushback from so much social media. People are exhausted by all the trends. And so we find ourselves now really trying to focus in on what is here to stay longer than a week, yes. a month, a year, even two or three years. I really want to be able to decorate my home with things that I will love yeah. a, decade a decade or a lifetime, preferably. Like, can we decorate with something for a lifetime? Wow. Well, I think so. Well, especially when you look at hard surfaces and you yeah. can't change floors out every few weeks. I mean, you can change a pillow out, I guess, but not floors or I know, or and like colors. the cabinets that we bought were an investment behind us Big here. time investment, yeah. And it's like, yeah, like I'm not gonna change these. Like, yeah. It's here to stay. Just because a TikTok comes out with something new, you can't change all you these things. You can't change it all every other week. And so I think that there's just a lot of pushback. And so with classic style, expect to see a lot of old favorites, things that never really went out of style and I think that you will see a little bit more traditional furniture coming mm. back but it will stay and it's gonna of course it's always gonna be a little bit of a mix it's a lot of these styles have a lot of segue you know like where you've got nice neutral paired back walls paired with something that's maybe a little bit more ornate or like for us we'd still love clean lines but this furniture for us is just so not trendy <laughs> Right, yeah. We're not trying to be the cool kids. We're really just trying to pick something that we know that like no matter what styles come and go, we are going to love these. So is it coming back literally word for word like it was in the 80s and 90s or is this no, like no. Of course not. Okay. And I love looking at like Ralph Lauren from that time period like in the 80s and 90s and yeah. I love looking at those interiors. I do think that the current version will be a little bit more pared back as you're just seeing in general people yeah. are being a little bit more pared back but then, like I said, anything goes. So if you're a maximalist and you like layers and layers of things piled on, then you should do that because there's, totally gonna, there's a tribe for you. So don't worry, there's always gonna be somebody doing it. So basically everybody's cool, which means none of us are cool. And so none of us should care about that. Exactly. <laughs> do whatever makes Stop us happy. caring and just have fun. Yeah, just have enjoy fun. your home. Yeah. Enjoy your home. So in 2024, the trend is enjoy your life, enjoy your home. If you see something that you love, Buy it, enjoy it. I do think that, you know, for as a designer, of course, I know that you can't just buy anything right. and everything. And sometimes it doesn't always go together. Having a color palette that you use can help you segue between styles if you find yourself kind of going back and forth between styles. Yeah. But overall, I think you are gonna see a more elegant, sophisticated, uh, style across the board. That sounds like a lot of fun to me. <laughs> it does sound like a lot of fun. <laughs> make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already and make sure you give the video a thumbs up if Big you loved up. it and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, bye. Bye.